made her job so easy. She gave you a wonderful overview. I am Lynette Grove. I am the sales rep at Protein Simple um, and the Simple Western Products. So this is our last instrument. And again, Angel did a fabulous job of the introduction. But we are part of, part of Biotechnique. So we sell not only the Protein Simple instrument and the reagents to go with it, but we are also part of the umbrella company that is R&D Systems. So you probably know them for antibodies. Right. Um, Nova Biologicals also in bodies. And then we're the protein characterization arm of things. Um, we also have instruments that automate ELISAs. Um, we um, do some ice, that type of stuff as well. So that is all we do luminex assays. So if you have a MAGFIX or an LS200 in your lab, regardless of you know how it's branded. Um, we also sell assays for the Luminex instrument as well. And Angel can always get you my contact information. It's over there on the brochures. You can see me about that. My email address is at the end. You can always reach out to me and I'll put you in touch with the right rep. Let me do a couple of introductions. Tia is the new field application scientist for Florida. And he's going to be doing the presentation. Um, and we've got Brad. And Monica, who are two other, uh, Greg is the field application manager for the area. And Monica is a new field application scientist who is learning how to do these presentations and working with customers. So she's in training. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. And Chia, I'll hand it over to you. Oh, hi. Yeah. My name is Chia again. I'm very new to uh, Broken Simple. We've been here for about uh, four, four, uh, four months. But my background is pretty big, obviously, looking at the proteins. Um, I used to work for every laboratory. We created a uh, whole sex uh, test kit, things like that. And I did a lot of uh, capillary electro for for, uh, for, uh, for rinses and HPLC, a lot of protein characterization. Um, so let's just talk about Western blood. Have, uh, you know, have anyone ever experienced a bad Western blood? The gel break apart, and there's a bubble in your, you know, membrane, and then you see protein bands like this. Well, I personally have a lot of bad experience with Western blood. I did the pouring gel, the pre-cast gel, the wet transfer, the dry transfer, the whole thing. I've been doing it for over 15 years, and I have seen this throughout my lifetime. And redoing the whole Western blood was such a bad experience. Uh, and then you also have a lot of waste. You know, like, methanol waste and rocker waste and things like that. So when we think about Western blood, we think about these 18 steps. And there's a lot of stuff with Western blood. Um, and any of these steps could go wrong. Like for instance, when I was working at Abbott, we uh, we were looking at um, our protein and, and my primary antibody, I had to shake it over time for 24 hours. And then I don't know where the shake it just uh, And next thing, my quantification of the band just Fall apart, and I was like, okay, I have to redo this. And there are times at the end, I said, yeah, I got my Western blood ready to go. Let me put this gel on the membrane. Then it breaks apart. And then I lose my standard, I lose my protein. Oh my gosh, I was it all over again. So, protein simple. What do we do? We make your Western blood automated. So, uh, and how do we make your sample automated? All you gotta do is prepare the sample. If you can't prepare the sample, then I don't want. We can't help you prepare your split sample. But then you just load your primary, your secondary, and your sample onto the plate, place it into the instrument, and hit go. So what uh, what uh, what happened during the run? Well, the uh, instrument will load your buffer, well, your matrix, just like an SDS page down. You're loading your matrix, then your stacking matrix, your separation matrix, and then the instrument will load the sample, separate it. I'll apply voltage in a vacuum, separate your protein based on size, and then it'll and then it'll add in your primary and your secondary, and then it'll quantify your your data for you. So you take all the eighteen steps and put into one one simple step. So here's an example of our group. We uh, have four different users. The picture is not a representative of their their faces. So I'm going to call it Jane, Jill, Mike, whatever. But uh, so they run UG, UG, UG one in uh, Hilo Lysate, and then they were able to quantify the Hilo Lysate from different days. 
and taking the average mean of that, and you get a percent DV of less than 10 percent. Would you quantify a regular Western blind and get this percent CV? I don't, I don't, I don't think you could quantify Western blind and get this percent CV from day to day. Because you know you got exposure membrane and things like that in the band, docking or lighting. So there's a lot of issue with that. So how about within run? So this is an example of you know within run and an analyst here ran two two uh, two different targets and they were able to get a, a target of less than 10 percent so you could multiply so you could look at multiple protein target in your light state and if it's different in size you could just put put the same antibody in there and quantify through you know through your way so often when we think of western blood we think of this blood here and how and how do we quantify that so as um, as uh, as uh, mentioned it's a uh, capillary electrophoresis so you could quantify that band, the peak area, the height, the width, and also the signal to noise. Just to look at your baseline. So you, you get more, like more of your data than just watching a band. So one of our customers here was looking at a protein and they published this paper and they found that they could measure the protein in the picogram and self, self, uh, self picogram, uh, picogram uh, levels. And they were, were looking at six different types of sample, and they found that the percent CV from three from three uh, three uh, three run was less than ten percent. So we are always attached to the band and things like that. And how and you know how we put this data into our you know publication? Well, the company could help you with that. You could annotate all your information and put it into your paper, generate a J J uh, J uh, J uh, fake file, then attach that to your publication, and I can show you how to do that too. So, so the point of the watch, lower, shorter, hand on time, thirty minutes is way way better than eighteen hours, you know. And then the chest and 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 the watch just does the thing. Then you able to quantify, and we have a lot of other instruments like the chest and the Abbey. So oh, it's similar to the West, but just a little bit more, but lower, lower hands on time, quicker generation of data, and you know, save you know, save a lot of your time. So how about sample? Uh, like you know, you, you have a lot of sample, and like what when you don't have a lot of sample, like you're looking at stem cells or things like that, the way precious and hard and, and hard to get. Well, the what or the just only three <coughs> microliters. So Three microliter, which is fifty or twenty microliter into a well, I think I would choose a three microliter over that. So uh, in this case study here, this is a uh, uh, individual of our uh, customer of our, who is looking at you know stem stem uh, uh, stem cell, and you know stem cell is hard to extract and they were precious and very valuable. So in this case study, he was looking at who uh, was extracting from mice. And mice are very expensive to maintain. Um, and the cost of the mice, like you, you like you're only able to get about a thousand. That's how much he calculated. And the cost per lane for him is ranging from a thousand to twenty-five thousand. Very, very, very expensive. How about simple western? Then he realized he could use simple western instead of the regular western. So he uh, reduced his cost to only three mice per lane and cost him sixty to fifteen hundred dollars. That's a great cost saving. So if I have a cost of the project, I will put it to this. And often when we think of Western blood, we can't really quantify. We think of the amino acid, the best way to go to do an absolute quantif uh, quantification. But the West could do this. The uh, West could be quantifiable. You could measure your protein based on size and you could quantify it. Something that like an immuno acid would not do. The immuno acid would just say yes or no, the protein is there and the amount of protein, but you won't get the size. So this is an example of a run from one of our customers. They were able to inject a standard into the sample and then they create a standard curve out of it, out of it and a compass would generate a standard curve out of it. And then they'll measure your endogenous protein, like things like this. So it's a very powerful tool. So instead of doing an, an immunoassay that doesn't give you size information, this gives you size information and all the quantification. 
And another question about how is also you know, quantify the protein or the drug, drug, uh, drug substance. And this is and this an example of what they did, and they were able to quantify that for their, for their studies. So, why simple Western? Well, simple Western is faster, you use less sample and a lot of less hands on time, and you could quantify your protein based on size. So, uh, uh, spinning apart from the West, we would like to talk to you about the JESS. So the JESS is similar to the West, but the JESS has a little more capability than the West. And I will talk about Peggy Sue and Sally Sue, but the JESS does it all. The JESS could leave everything in as anything with these other instrumentation. So with the JESS, um, it has multiple channels. You can do the penulumin channel, and you could also do the fluorescent channel. And you can do total protein and protein normalization. And I could explain the difference between the two. Total protein is often used on a key channel, and that's only if you're loading a lower amount on your sample. But what, but what happens if you have a target that is so low, low in concentration, then protein normalization is the way to go. It will amplify that signal and give you a higher sensitivity. So, Often with the West, you can't run things on the same capillary. Like say, I want to do one target and do the total protein on the same you know, capillary. Well, the JESS could do that. The JESS, you could start probing one target and then it'll remove that one target and add in another target. And then you could quantify that. You could do total protein on that or protein normalization on the same you know, capillary. So you could get more and more, like, you know, more data. We have customers that do like 10 targets. And I don't know if that's a lot of targets, but they don't, you could do a lot. <clears throat> How about multiplexing? Well, you could multiplex with all the different channels, just make use of all those channels. So, in this example here, they are looking at uh, EGFR and bus, 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 uh, bus, uh, bus related e, EGFR uh, and H, HSP16. So, they were able to visualize all the three different proteins there. So you, you could measure the ratio and things like that. And that would be great for opening a publication if you could get the ratio. I guess I had to I guess I had to admit uh, Brad. So hello Brad. Welcome to the meeting. <laughs> so uh, what happens if you have a sample, like say an endogenous protein that would be very lowly expressive and you can't really see it on see visibly on your western blood, and then you want to amplify that signal. Well, we have the Stella. Stella works with just in such that the secondary is is coated with uh, DNA, and the DNA is amplified over time, and it'll increase the sensitivity of your protein. And I don't know. After a meeting, maybe when I started, and uh, maybe Brad. Uh, so I guess I'll just uh, move this slide over here. <laughs> so this is an example of um, one of the run looking at uh, R, like an uh, RNA A in the chemi channel has a LOD of point point out point three eight. This is our highest sensitivity channel, and this is the full fluor fluor fluorescent channel has uh, lower sensitivity of. 6.8 and 17 nano nano nanogram per mil. But with Stella, you increase that sensitivity to 0.13 and 0.23. So that's that's almost triple the signal of the Kimi channel. Okay, all right, good. So so how do you run a West? Uh, how do you develop a method for this? Well, with, with every Western, you have your primary selection, your primary concentration, and your sample concentration. So you ask yourself, do I want to be quantitative or qualitative? If you want to be quantitative, you can run about two antibodies on the same run. If you say, okay, I don't know that if, uh, if this primary works, I have multiple primary that I want to try out, or if I have different multiple, uh, multiple targets that I want to try out, then be qualitative. You can always turn a qualitative uh, assay to a quantitative assay. 
you can screen up to 12. <clears throat> so with uh, with our simple Western instruments, we need to rethink how we run Western blood. We, we, we always want our primary antibody to be in the saturation concentration, because what happened if you're in the linear range here on the bottom? Well, 10 microliter difference or 10% difference of volume on your primary antibody may have an impact on the output signal. It, it, uh, it could dramatically change to 8,000 or 6,000. And that's like from analyst to analyst and consistency. You, you want something consistent from day to day, run to run. You don't want varying data like, I don't know where I get an 8,000 signal and then the next day I get like 4,000. Then you question yourself, am I like what's the real number so you want to work in the saturation kind of saturation concentration where that change in volume will not impact the day-to-day -day run but with heavy assay there's there are always some little pitfall that we need to struggle with and when you increase the primary antibody you might increase the background noise so that's always like a trade-off so we are uh, we we uh we always ask our customer work in the green green optimal region where your antibody is in the saturation concentration and your background is to the minimum and you ask yourself how about my sample your sample always needs to be linear so if i add, say if i have one microgram per mil of sample and i i add another one that's two micrograms per mil i should have double the signal right double the peak area this is what we are trying to say so you want your sample to be linear while you are treating your sample in the primary uh, antibodies in the saturation concentration. So things like that will happen. So you don't want to work in the non-linear range for the sample. You want to work in the linear range. So when I say linear, you know you want to do that for total protein, protein normalization. If you do housekeeping protein, you also want to keep those in the linear range too, because if you quantify your housekeeping gene or not in, in the non-linear range, then your sample, then that part, that uh, quantification is incorrect or it doesn't work well. So how do we do that? We assess three, three <clears throat> concentration of your sample. So the two max formula is for sample that you don't really know if it's high or low of your, your protein target. So we just add a lot of your sample and just kind of like pick three concentrations. If you know your sample is really abundant, then you might want to try a lower concentration. But if your protein is pure, then just do five, five, uh, five uh, microgram per mil or lower. So come just combining both three rows, you just do three concentration and three primary antibodies. And then your controls always run your controls. Don't forget about them. And then and then you could run this into two two uh, antibody uh, concentration. And you know, I could work with you guys on on this, and I could help you de like develop all your assay and give you some of my advice and things like that. And uh, with that, I'm sorry that it was pretty quick. You can always reach out to me. Uh, you could have a sit down and look at some of your target and start you know, get, you know, characterizing your data and have it in your publication. So if anyone have any question, let me know. I do. Can you go back to the slide where you were talking about the amplification? Oh, it's um, I have never Stellar. Oh. Yeah, Stellar. <laughs> oh, Stellar is a new uh, assay that we created. Uh, so it's an assay yep. detection. detection. Yep. Oh, for Jess? Yes, for the Jess. Oh, for Jess. Okay. And this is for the Jess. Uh, <clears throat> it's just a bunch of DNA onto the secondary and it will bind to each other and it will amplify the signal. That's only if you need uh, like your protein is very low in concentration, like your target that you're looking at. So that um, it will, it will that's, you know, yep. very that's really great. Yep. So if you're working with T cells, yep. if you're working with extracellular vesicles, you have very little concentration. Yep. That's one way that you can amplify. Your signal with just a very small amount of protein. And then, right. and then, and then, when, and then, when you do your treatment, you could see the up and low increase and increase of the protein. 
So this is really useful as well. Yeah, because it can be used in combination with Kenny luminescence, and then you have yeah. two channels for NIR and IR that are going to be equivalent sensitivity to that Kenny luminescence. Yeah. So you get that great sensitivity for three different things. Almost got yeah. And then you can modify for this. So always make use of the modify thing because you want to get that ratio data into your paper. Uh, the percentage is the same for the chest. That's that. Oh, yeah, the percentage is, it is the same because uh, the West and the chest is kind of like similar to the uh, you know, instrument. It's just that the West that doesn't have the king and woman that's coming up for these, these three, three other channels. So, but the sensitive, but, but the percent TV is all the same. So, the monoclonal antibody core has a West. But there's another core on campus that has a JESS. So if you're interested in trying out the JESS, um, I can get you in contact with that core director and you can go over it. I think over on the PM board. So do you need a specific uh, license buffer for the sample? Uh, we uh, most slices buffer work with our system. Uh, I have uh, we have our PDF file that I present to you. To show if your license buffer is is not suitable for our instrumentation, but ninety five percent of the time it is. So I saw the device in the capillary. So is that possible to, uh, for the tissue to reset the bridge across the 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 tube? The... Oh no no. Uh, when when you I just we 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 ask you to treat your sample like you treat your Western blind, except that uh, you use our math mix instead of your. Um, then okay. uh, lemonide buffer. Okay. Um, so just use our master mix. It has an internal standard, which is great to us. So the in that that internal standard will assess your run too, and it will give you size 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 data with the internal standard. Because we have three internal standard in each, you know, capillary. In but it's all embedded in the master mix. So just treat your sample the way you treat your Western blind, but just use our master mix. Mm -hmm. So if you boiling your sample to 90 degrees and boil it, if you boil it to 37, treat it at 37, then keep it at 37. But otherwise, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. concentration, we could work with that. We could develop your assay for it. Or oh, we could talk about it um, if you have a 30 minute time uh, one on one. Yeah. I think I have some expired um, sample packs. So if you want to come over to the lab, I can show you, you know, basically how you set up a run. <laughs> and it comes with like DTT. So if you normally use DTT in your runs, then you would use it. If you don't, we don't use it. Um, it has the sample buffer. Um, it comes with the master mix, which has got the internal standards, which allows it after the run has gone through to line it up with the with the ladder. So all your proteins are at the you know using the same. They only have one ladder um, length, and so it lines everything up with the ladder. Um, so you're going to be available at the ICBR. It is for how long? <laughs> I would like to get more users on our West so I can put in an argument for getting a chance. So I'll yeah, and, 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 and you know, you got 25 capillary, so you don't have to, you could combine people, mm -hmm. but two people could run it, you know, like two people could start the characterization or optimization if you have two targets. My, you know, might as well just use all the capillary and do not leave any well empty because mm -hmm. uh, the, the system has a vacuum. So if this, this is the vacuum that picks it up, <clears throat> if you leave one well empty, you kind of like break that vacuum and cause a problem. So you always want to use the 25 capillary. So if you have 25 and you don't want to use it on, just ask someone if you want to run any wet and blind. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and they could use different primary. It doesn't have to be the same as yours. So you know, sometimes the samples are a bit viscous, or the, is there like there's no specific lysis buffer you use? So uh, or? 
you 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 would dissolve the sample in our sample bottle, and that's the problem. So, okay. Yeah. They dilute it, so you have your usually you have your cell lysate, mm -hmm. and then you'll dilute it further because you want to. I typically load the same. If I'm running the same type of sample, I'll run the same concentration. Yeah. So I dilute it down because you know when you so you add the same volume every yeah. Well, not necessarily the same volume, but the same protein concentration to each length. Yeah. Like yeah. if I'm doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. But because tissue is sometimes the concentrate protein concentration is different. Yeah. So I try and normalize to that. Yeah. Okay. And and I dilute it with their. Exactly. Um, exactly. Well, so. When we think of Western blood, we think of it in microgram, like loading, well, I load three microgram, but with our simple Western, we want you to think of it as concentration. So microgram per mil instead of the loading three microgram. And then you only need three microliters of your sample. So <clears throat> of that three microliters, less is only got to take a small fraction of it. Yeah. So that three microliters is enough to get the capillary in. So the capillaries are smaller than three microliters for a full load, and we're only going to load a small sample plug there. We can change that size of the sample plug uh, if we need to, if one of our optimization steps. But yeah, uh, we are only going to take a small fraction of it. So um, it's good when we talk and uh, have con conversations that we're working on the same, using the same vocabulary. And so we'll talk usually in microgram per mil because we're not loading into the capillary we're loading into the well and the system is loading it yeah <clears throat> that's also one of the really great um things about wes and jess is that you have control over some of the parameters so like for instance let's say you have a sample that's very um low concentration you can load more so you can set you have complete control, basically. Um, there's the default system, which you know works for most for most assays. But if you are um, coming into some kind of situation, you can increase the blocking time. You can yeah. um, you can play with the parameters if you need to. You can you know load more sample, and um, so it's very customizable to your to your lab and to your research needs. Yes, and, and with blocking buffer, if you know that that one blocking buffer works for your system, you can use your blocking buffer in this. You don't have to use our blocking buffer. And I also had work with customers that had their own secondary, and I, I helped them optimize their own secondary. So, Does everybody do westerns in here? Pretty much. I mean, that's pretty standard for yeah. most labs. So, so really, all you need to know is have the sample, know where the sample is from, and what secondary that you need. So, because you are using our own uh, protein simple secondary and blocking buffer and sample buffer. So, all you really need is just sample and your primary. What if? Uh... You know, all the primary antibody is perfect. So if you have any uh, non-specific targeting, so how you are fed from handle this situation? Um, if there's any non-specific issue, we, we could always figure out where the optimization is, looking at the signal to noise, uh, you know, baseline, and trying to figure that out. So we, we always ask a specific level of base baseline. So we do, we just have to run the assay and see where the baseline is, and then we kind of like optimize it further on. So you need to uh, figure it out before you. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you always want to figure that out because after you finalize the method, it's it is a load and go afterward. Because mm -hmm. you want to keep that saturation concentration. Because usually, regular when you do Western blot, you don't think of saturation. You just load your primary body and shake it like this, and you don't know if it's really saturating or not. But we we are making Western blood quantifiable. If you run a Western blood, I don't think it's really quantifiable. So you know, sorry. So in the file uh website it says that there's the some uh, antibody have already been tested or in the yep. So we, we do have yeah. all the 
anybody uh, working the Western blood, a normal Western blood, will work in the protein sample. So if the if the primary is wood, but works on Western blood, it should work within our system. And we also do have a database with all the companies that have look at different targets using different primary, and then you can always go to the database, say, I'm looking for this target, and then, and then they'll tell you which primary works for them, so you always use those primary instead of spending time trying to quell antibodies and seeing if it works or not. And we, we also have the Biotechnic Academy, and you can go through that and look at our training. Uh, and, you know, Angel here, yeah, we're also going to go through that and go always download the software. It's free and do, you know, there's no license involved. Okay, you just download your data onto a flash drive, and then you can take it to your own computer and sit there with a cup of coffee. Do your data analysis. <laughs> The files are. I think. I think you. Once you try it, like going back to standard traditional westerns, is if you're not going to want to do that, it's <laughs> so easy and convenient, and you just set it up and you walk away and come back and your data is ready. You just you know analyze your data. Um, it's you can do two or even three runs in a day depending on how organized you are. <laughs> um, and Yes, and honestly, it, <clears throat> I think one one thing that really helps is if you have, for instance, if you are looking at an animal model and you're looking at a particular protein and you're not stimulating it, um, you can, if you have a knockout animal, that'll show you, especially if you have multiple banding. So let's say your antibody is not that great. And so you're getting multiple bands, just like you would in a standard traditional Western. If you have a knockout, um, a knockout model, <clears throat> you can run that and you can see, okay, well, the band is not, this particular band is not there. So that provides evidence that is the band that you are seeing in the sample that's being expressed is the actual protein that you want to quantify. That makes sense. So it's just like a regular traditional Western where, you, you know, you have to validate your antibodies typically ahead of time. And that's one way you can do it in this system. So we always take the absolute quantification approach to run a standard, quantify your target amount for each treatment. Yeah, and just to do a, a shameless plug, a year and a half ago, I gave a webinar that is now recorded in our academy about Western Black controls and how to validate peaks. Uh, really going over a lot of the different kinds of controls that people do for standard amino acids, as well as you know how you would apply that for uh, <coughs> both traditional and civil Western. So shameless plug, I know, but. <laughs> Well, and if you have an antibody and you want to do some validation, and I work really closely with our proteomics department for doing a um, mass spec analysis of targets just to confirm that the antibody is actually finding what it's supposed to bind to. Um, Genco's here. And also with the Luminex assays that um, they were mentioning, we have a FlexMap Luminex uh, device in in uh, Jen's course. So if you are interested in doing Luminex technology, uh, R and D Systems has some really great kits that you can purchase, and then or we can purchase them for you. Jen's usually pretty good about getting a very good discount, and then run them on our instruments. So we have a, a lot of different instruments in the ICBR, and if you haven't been on a tour lately, please come by. We can give you a tour and show you all of our new toys. And um, all the things you can do in your research at a very reduced, you know, cost. You know, our goal is to break even, so you know, using our instruments, especially um, since we have a lot of sophisticated technology. Um, it's, it's good to come and try it out. And for instance, my biolayer instrument, biolayer interferometer, is free. So if you're doing any types of protein-protein um, interaction, you want to, you know, you can actually validate your antibody using that.
So you can uh, measure the binding kinetics and you know it's like you use it in an assay. So um, I have three probes for the octet and three instrument time and probes for the um, for the gear bio, which is